You probably already know that nothing moves faster than light, but did you know that nothing moves slower than light? Nothing moves faster than light and nothing moves slower than light. We're all moving at light speed. Starting from the same point, Alice and Bob move off at right angles to each other. From Alice's perspective, she's going forwards and Bob is moving off to her right. From Bob's perspective, he is moving forwards and Alice is moving off to his left. So what's going on here? Alice and Bob are recording the same event from different coordinate systems. To transform from Bob's coordinate system to Alice's, we simply need to rotate everything by 90 degrees clockwise. Now Alice and Bob are in a drag race. Alice is moving faster than Bob, so she sees him fall further and further behind. Relative to Alice, Bob is moving backwards, and relative to herself, Alice isn't moving. We can plot their positions as a function of time, on a distance time graph. Time increases vertically, and it shows Bob falling increasingly behind Alice over the course of the race. Bob sees Alice moving further and further ahead. From his perspective, their motion looks different. But again, they're describing the same event. And we can move between Alice and Bob's perspective using a coordinate transformation. But it's no longer a simple rotation. We have to use something called a Lorentz transformation. The grid lines that represent equal divisions of time and space from Bob's perspective have been warped. From Alice's perspective, Bob is experiencing time move at a different rate. Two seconds, according to Bob, looks like two and a bit seconds to Alice. This is called time dilation, and it's really only noticeable when two objects are moving at very different speeds. And Alice and Bob are moving at very different speeds. While each division in the time direction represents one second, each division in the x direction represents 300 million metres. So if we added light to our list of drag races, its motion is described by two lines at 45 degrees to the vertical. Bob is falling behind Alice at almost half the speed of light. When we transform back into Bob's perspective, see that although the path Alice takes through space and time, space time changes, the path that light takes is the same. This shows that light appears to have the same speed no matter how fast you're moving, it's the foundation of special relativity, and it's the reason we use the Lorentz transformation. There are other paths in space-time that don't change when we move between coordinate systems. This line is called a hyperbola, and although the transformation moves points along the hyperbola, points that begin on the hyperbola stay on the hyperbola. All these points have something in common, but what? Let's go back to our original transformation to find out. What curves remain unchanged by rotation? Circles, of course. All the points that begin on a circle remain on that circle, and all the points on the circle do have a common property. They're all the same distance away from its centre. We use this idea to say that all the points on the hyperbola are the same proper distance away from the origin. How long do Alice and Bob take to reach the same proper distance? Well, we can see from Bob's perspective, after two seconds have passed, he will reach the hyperbola. Alice seems to take a bit longer. Yet from Alice's perspective, it also only takes her two seconds to reach the hyperbola. So, no matter how fast you're going, it always takes the same time to travel the same proper distance. Everything travels at the same speed. OK, so I've cheated a little. Einstein's theory of special relativity forces us to think of time as an extra dimension that we can travel through in the same way that we can travel through the other three dimensions of space. And we have to accept that seconds and metres mean different things to people moving at different speeds. The only thing we can agree on is the proper distance between two points. But the proper distance is a measurement of space-time, and so has both spacey and timey qualities. Since speed is distance over time, 
And in space-time, distance and time are really kind of the same thing. Then speed loses its meaning, or it's just equal to one. What we really have control of is the direction we move through space-time. The less we move through space, the more we move through time. And the more we move through space, the less we move through time. Time appears to slow down for fast-moving objects. This kind of trade-off is obvious when it comes to rotation. The more that Bob appears to be moving ahead, the less he can be moving right. So perhaps it's not so surprising that the Lorentz transformation that we've been using is also called a hyperbolic rotation. In matrix form, they look a lot like rotations too. And the only parameter we have control of is the angle. So, the next time you're dealing with a speeding ticket, perhaps you can explain, there's no such thing as fast or slow. All you're guilty of is travelling at a different angle. <laughs>